Well, Professor Clements with you as we consider a wave optics problem. We have light that's approaching a double slit. I just show one ray of light here, but in the wave chapter, you're going to see diagrams with wave fronts coming in here, and we're dealing with coherent light. So the wave front uh, produces a peak at each opening at the same time. 600 nanometers for our wavelength, and we'll want to uh, change this to meters for our calculation. The nano is 10 to the minus 9, so 600 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. That'll be our wavelength. And we see a, a slit here separated by 0 0.046 millimeters. We're only doing the double slit problem in this exercise today. We're ignoring uh, diffraction effects of the single slit. Our screen is 3.6 meters away from the slits. This drawing is not to scale. I've expanded the uh, separation of the slits. Um, so the screen is a long distance away. And we want to find the location of the second order maximum. Now I'm going to do this in pencil in case I have to erase, but straight ahead of the slits in the middle, I'm drawing the intensity of the light. So we would have a, a dip as we go away from the central max. So it's bright here, it's dim when this intensity graph comes back to the screen. And we want to have the second order max. So it turns out this is the zeroth order, the central max. And then first order, and then maybe second order like this. But second order tells us what M number to use in our calculation. The M will be 2 for second order. And our uh, equation that's governing this uh, calculation is the separation of the slits D times the sine of the angle to the maximum on the screen equals an integer m, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., times the wavelength. So we're going to be solving for theta, and then we'll do a calculation for the angle out here will be theta. It's the same as the angle right here. If I create a right triangle, uh, this short side is the left side of our calculation, d sine theta. And we're producing constructive interference here, a maximum, because we have one full wavelength. Actually, in this case with m equals 2, we have two full extra wavelengths from the, the slit to this point. And then we have the same path length for the lines from the top slit and the line from this point towards the maximum. So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, d sine theta. d is 0 0.046 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. So I can go ahead and uh, put that in uh, into our calculation. Or I'm going to go ahead and put in 4.6 times 10 to the minus 5 meters for the D. Theta is unknown. We have a 2 for M and we have 600 times 10 to the minus 9 for the wavelength. So you should pause and do this calculation. Go ahead and take inverse sine of the number that uh, comes up and then resume the, uh, the video. So on my calculator I have sine of theta is 2.6087 times 10 to the minus 2. And I would recommend you don't round off before you take inverse sine. But you take inverse sine of both sides. We've done something like this before. We'll cancel off the sine function with inverse sine here. We'll take the inverse sine of this number. And I came up with theta of 1.495 degrees, rounding off a little bit at this point. That's the angle theta. That's the angle in this small triangle. It is also the angle in this big triangle that goes out to the screen. It's a right triangle out here, just as this one, small triangle is a right triangle. Which trig function, if you know theta and you know this distance, we'll call it L, would allow us to calculate Y, the distance from the central max to the location of the second order maximum? Which trig function would you use? Well, we don't have knowledge of the length of the hypotenuse, so we'd use tangent. So tangent of theta is equal to this y distance divided by L. And 
going ahead and uh, putting in what we know. The angle is 1.495 degrees. We want to calculate y. We know the screen is 3.6 meters away. Again, you should pause, do your own calculation. I came up with y of 9.39 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. That would be 9.39 centimeters. So that's the position to the second order maximum. The equation that governs this calculation for the maxima, for the bright spot on the screen for a double slit, the slit separation times the sine of the angle equals an integer, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's given by the order number, times the wavelength. Need both of these in meters. Don't mix your units. Okay, well, what about the minima? Where's the minimum location? We want to find where the second minimum is located. So we're going to call it here. Again, there's going to be a central maximum. Intensity graph is what I'm doing here. So intensity, we're bright here. Intensity is down to zero at this point on my graph. And this would be the first minimum. And then there's going to be another max, and then my second minimum. So first minimum, second minimum. The equation that governs our calculation here is d sine theta, it might look familiar, is m plus one half times the wavelength. And our situation now for the minimum, if I create this little right triangle again, the extra path here for this problem is one and a half wavelengths. So if I have peaks starting at the slit, this light again is coherent. I have peaks at the openings at the same time. One and a half wavelengths, that would bring me to a valley. Here's a peak. Again, these lines are equal length. So these two sections of the wave will arrive at the same time. A peak from here, a valley from here and we'll have cancellation, destructive interference. So the m number, the appropriate m number to use here, this would be m equals 0 to the first minimum, and this is m equals 1. So this is a little tricky. You need to go ahead and uh, make your own little intensity graph and label this out. m equals 0 is the first minimum. m equals 1 is the second minimum. So let's go ahead and put our numbers in. We already know d is 4.6 times 10 to the minus 5 meters from part a. We want to calculate this angle again. And we'll have 1.5, or m is a 1, and 600 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. Again, you should pause and do your own calculation. I came up with sine of theta 1.9565 times 10 to the minus 2. I take inverse sine of both sides. And I have theta 1.121 degrees. And it is appropriate that this angle is smaller than the angle up above. Um, we're at the second minimum, which is before the second maximum. We calculated the position of the second maximum up above. Um, so that's our angle. In the same way, we use the tangent calculation to tell us where we are on the screen. So I'd have tangent of 1.121 degrees equals this y now for the minimum. 3.6 meters is still our separation of slit to screen. Try this calculation on your own. I came up with uh, 7.04 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. So there's a different calculation for the minima. The minima are calculated by d sine theta equals n plus a half wavelength. We need to create an out-of-phase situation, extra half wavelength of path on this uh, line in this small right triangle. And again, d is the hypotenuse. Theta is up at the top here. And uh, d sine theta equals n plus a half lambda. For the case of constructive interference, where the bright spots are located, d sine theta equals m lambda, we want an integer number of wavelengths here. So we get peak and peak traveling together, arriving at the same time, or valley and valley. So we have constructive interference for the maxima. We have destructive interference as peak and valley, or the other half cycle, 
peak here and valley up here arrive out of phase at the screen and produce a dark spot. Keep practicing and ask your instructor some questions.